Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I know what you're thinking. Emily, you got new glasses. And <laughs> thank you so much for noticing. Yes, I did. Today we're going to talk about my summer favorites in the year 2022, which still feels like 2020. So the first book I read is actually the first four books I read because I once I started, I could not finish. And that is Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. I bought this forever ago and I was waiting for the perfect time to read it. But then I watched the Netflix adaptation first and started reading this immediately. I had the second volume. I read both of them in the same night. I could not stop. They do go really quickly because the graphics are really big. The, the font's really big so you can get through it really quickly. This story is coming of age romance. It's adorable. It is very British. It is very cute and wholesome. Our two main characters are Charlie and Nick. Charlie was outed last year against his will. Um, so now the whole school knows he's gay. He goes to an all-boys school and that's a tough thing. There aren't a lot of openly gay kids at this school. He meets Nick, the sweet but also like an athlete, you know? And they strike up a friendship that gradually turns into a maybe romance and I'm not gonna tell you any more than that but it's so sweet and so cute and heartwarming. A lot of coming-of-age stories like this that I have read tend to be very heavy and dramatic and they don't always give you that warm fuzzy feeling because the main characters are going through so much but in this series, it's not really like that, where they are going through a lot. I'm, I'm not going to say that. I like they, they go through a lot of tough things, but it's always positive. The people and the friends, the family, they treat each other well for the most part. And it just leaves you feeling good. So I highly recommend reading this and watching the Netflix adaptation. There are slight differences between the two stories, but I really liked both of them in their own right. Volume 5 comes out either this year or next year, and Volume 5 will be the last volume, so I'm kind of sad about that because I wish it could just go on forever. I was really on a high cue, just kick, and I read Volumes 15 through 26. I brought a lot of books on vacation with me. I even like sat down one day and narrowed it down what books I would bring with me, and it ended up on vacation. All I read was Haikyuu, so I really just needed to bring my Kindle. It's about a men's volleyball team in Japan. I love it so much. It's so uplifting, and again, it's heartwarming. It's like my happy place. There is drama, but it's the like kind of sports drama that gets you fired up. <laughs> it's not like people aren't, aren't dying and getting eaten by monsters. <laughs> in this manga. It's just about volleyball and again I, I, I say this every time but I'm not a sports person. Like this is not something I would typically read but I just love this and I anytime I'm feeling down I can just pick it up and I instantly feel better. So then I read some mysteries I guess mystery thrillers. The first one I read was The Maid by need a prose. I had really high hopes for this because I saw it everywhere. I even saw a lady at my eye doctor reading it. She had it uh, like a physical copy with her and she was really into it. I I didn't like it. I I did not like it. I was listening to the audiobook and it took me a long time to even get into it and then I didn't get all the way through it when I had to return the audiobook and I went to the bookstore to buy it so I could finish it and I held it up and I had it in my hands and I thought to myself I didn't even I don't really think I'm enjoying this book I don't think I want to buy it because I don't think it's one I'm gonna read again I had to wait to check it out from my library again so I could actually finish it eh, didn't didn't care for it so this is a murder mystery it's about uh, a maid that works in a hotel and she one day uh, comes across a dead body 
basically. And then is kind of implicated in the murder. It's a mystery, so I can't really say much. One of my main problems with this book, though, is it's very clear reading this that the main character is neurodivergent. And the author does not come out and give the character a diagnosis. It does read as though she could be diagnosed with autism, but again, that is never said in the book. In the book, it's just explained as though she struggles with reading social situations. I think it might have been more beneficial to come out with the diagnosis. We see this a lot in books where it's like the author wanted this character to be endearing, so it comes it almost comes across that if she came out and said this is an autistic character that that would take away from her being more endearing, which is not true, but it it just reads that way and I see that a lot with with books that want quirky main characters but don't want to come out and say they're autistic or they're neurodivergent or something like that and it's it's a pet peeve okay this book wanted to be eleanor oliphant is completely fine it wanted to be that but it it never got there for me the eleanor book i thoroughly enjoyed this book really missed the mark for me. I did not like the representation. It ended up being like a story where the white neurotypical characters come and save the day and that is not the book that I was hoping it would be. So I ended up giving this two stars. Didn't really like it. Moving on. The next book I read was The Silent Patient. Um, this was published in 2019. I saw it everywhere. The cover freaks me out. I can't really even look at it too long. Then one of my friends that I met at the dog park, she read it and really liked it and she specifically said that the twist blew her mind. <laughs> I love a good twist so I'm like all right I gotta I gotta try this out. I feel very neutral about the book. There were times where I really got into it and there were times where it was really slow. At, at one point I did guess the twist but it was pretty laid on. It is a really good twist. The way all the all the threads come together, well crafted. The the quality of the book was high. However, it's just not really a genre that I usually love, and so I think it was more a me problem. Backing up to this story. So in this book, we're following an artist named Alicia who has seemingly shot her husband like five times in the face and is now in a mental hospital and has not said one word since this happened. The main character of the book, or at least the, the narrator of the book, is actually her psychiatrist. So we're mostly seeing the book from his perspective. However, between the chapters, we get her diary entries of what happened before the incident. He was a fan of her, of her art, before he became her psychiatrist. So he already knew who she was. And he knew that there was more to her story. So his goal is to get her to talk, to, to explain what happened. I don't really want to say more than that. It's very good. I gave it three stars because... It, uh, I don't know. It was a me problem. <laughs> I didn't, I never really got like totally into it, but it's definitely worth checking out if you think you're gonna be into that kind of thing. The next book I read was a poetry collection, Walking to Martha's Vineyard by Franz Wright. I picked this up because I stumbled across some of the poetry in this collection online and I really liked the poems that I saw. It did win the Pulitzer Prize, so I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll check it out. I liked it. I like the way he crafts his poems. However, there were stronger religious overtones in this collection than I anticipated. If you yourself are a religious person, you'll probably like this. I liked it. However, I have kind of a, a, a history with religion. <laughs> it was a little bit jarring for me personally at times. 
I don't want to say triggering, just I have issues. I have personal issues that conflicted with <laughs> the overtones of this book. So I'm not saying that it's the book's fault. I fully want to respect artists in the way that they experience their world and want to communicate their feelings through their art. On that note, Florence and the Machines new album, oh my god, I think it's my favorite album by her, which is saying a lot because she's one of my favorite artists. And that album has a lot of religious over overtones too, but I it never gets like preachy in any way. That was a detour about Florence and the Machine. I highly recommend that album. It's very good. This this book this it was okay. The fact that it won a Pulitzer Prize kind of myths me. Will I read more from this author? Maybe. The last book I want to talk about. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I read and finished reading. The Fellowship of the Ring. I know what you're thinking, like, it's really a big deal. Like, that book came out literally decades ago. Everyone has read it. If you've seen any of my past videos, you'll know that I've been a fan of the movies since I was a, a child, but because of the whole reading level structure of the grade school that I grew up in, I put up a mental block and never thought that I would be able to read it and understand it and enjoy it. Happy to say that was not the case. I read it. I could not put it down. I loved every moment of it. If you go on my Goodreads, I I marked up the whole ebook because I mostly read the ebook. I highlighted a lot of quotes. I had a lot of thoughts. I am going to read The Two Towers soon. I wanted to take a little bit <laughs> of a break because they are large books, but I do plan on picking up the two towers probably by the end of the year. So I, I'm so excited. I don't think I need to explain what this book is about because everyone probably knows. It is high fantasy. <laughs> it's like the, the OG high fantasy. And actually somehow, even though I thought I knew all these characters like super well, I feel like I know them even better now, despite there being so many characters and so little screen time, <laughs> page time per character. They each say like a little bit of dialogue throughout the whole book, but he does so much with the dialogue that they're given to build up their characters. It's, it's phenomenal. And the world building, oh my god, <laughs> like it's just, it's a masterclass. It's a masterclass. I'm blown away. I'm happy to report that I've gotten here. I'm on this train now. I feel like a, a truer fan and I will come back and report whenever I finish Two Towers and Return of the King. A little bit of a side note to say some books I'm in the process of reading, but I have not finished them yet. I did start reading The Left Hand of Darkness. I, I liked it. Like I'm, I'm like a quarter of the way through I was enjoying it, but I don't think I was in the mood for it. It's it's so sci-fi, and I knew I wanted to read The Fellowship of the Ring. It didn't feel like a good book to read while I was also reading a very high fantasy story. It was just too much, so I put this on hold. I am going to finish it. I might restart it. I'm not sure when I'm going to finish it, but... I will. I will. The other book I've been reading, I've been reading this kind of slowly, um, but I, I am really enjoying it. It's In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. This is a true crime novel. It is about something that actually happened, so it's mostly nonfiction, but it is written in the structure and style of a novel. So it's it's a very unique book. It's a classic. I picked it up because I've been into true crime lately and I knew this was a classic and I wanted to give it a go. It is so beautifully written. I am in love with the way that Truman Capote writes. I've never read anything by him before. I will continue to read more by him because he's a writer. <laughs> like. 
dang. He's the kind of writer that makes me realize that I could never be a writer because I could never be that good with language. I am so invested in the people of the story and it's it's so sad because he the way he sets up the family in the beginning you really get to to know each family member and you know that they all get murdered and it it's devastating he really brings them to life and i think that that is so powerful and when you get into the true crime world it is sometimes difficult to remember that these stories are about actual people um, and I think that he he does a really good job at at showing the personalities of each of the victims and yeah it's one I'm really enjoying I'm going through it very slowly because it is a very heavy book but it's it's been really well written so far some favorites okay from Glossier my two favorites my two top favorites I tried their priming moisturizer this is the balance version for oil control because I have normal to combo skin, but right now it is July in Alabama and my skin has been juicy. I've been using this every morning and it is so good because it is a moisturizer, but it really, it really helps control any excess oil. So if if you're like me and you have oily skin or you get oily in the summer, I do recommend this. My favorite thing from Glossier has been their perfume, the Glossier U. My mom got me this full size for my birthday. I love it. I've never been into perfume before this year. I was on a mission to find my scent, my perfect scent. I didn't want anything too floral and I really wanted something that didn't lean too feminine or too masculine. I really wanted something that could go either way. It's very unique and it does smell slightly different on everyone that uses it. That's why it's called Glossier U because it's supposed to enhance your natural scent and I love it. I don't think I will ever not have a bottle of this in my collection going forward. I absolutely love it. The next favorite, I've really gotten into painting my nails lately because I found some cruelty-free brands that are pretty affordable and very high quality. If you watch a lot of YouTube, you'll probably know about Light Slacker, which is Kathleen Light's brand. And I have tried some of her shades and I do like them. Um, I think my favorite so far has been Zoe, the, the more mauve shade. The summer shade Letty that just came out is kind of a, it's like a really bright green. I really wanna try that one. But I also tried Olive in June and I'm, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with Olive in June's nail, nail polish. They are cruelty free. I think they're LA based and they're an all female team. Their polish is very affordable. You can find it in Target. I think it retails for $9 a bottle, which is cheaper than Light Slacker, though I do think you get more and light slacker but i find that the quality of this nail polish is so 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 good and it has that wide fan brush that i apparently love so my favorite shades i've been i was into more pastel shades you're invited is more of a like a lilac pastel purple it is what i'm wearing on my fingers however i i, I meant to redo them this morning so i'm sorry they're they're it's been about a week since I painted them, so they're not looking so great. Cucumber Sandwich is like a pastel green, and Boost is a is a really pretty pastel blue. And then from their summer line that just came out, I really liked Field Day, which is a coral that's so bright it almost borders on red. Some of these shades are limited edition. I think Field Day and the the purple shade you're invited are limited edition so if you're interested in those you might want to get them quickly this is not sponsored i just really really like them i think that's all yeah thanks for watching if i don't have outro music or if it's different it's because i keep getting copyright claimed so i don't know what happened i'm gonna have to change my outro music sorry because I, I i liked 
but anyway thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe if you want to see my future videos comment down below which of these books you're interested in reading and i'll see you next time bye my hair matches my phone case to some extent so there's that existential dread alicia or alicia white savior yeah yeah <laughs> michael michael i did michael levy's i i don't i'm so sorry alicia alicia did the I, 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 tolkien is is that tolkien 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 i forget what kind of psychiatrist i am not a doctor <laughs> is there any world building better than this book there, there might be. I honestly don't read a lot of fantasy. Alicia, Alish, Alicia. I'm sorry if you can hear uh, the baby screaming upstairs. They're, they're nice people, but they have children. Children scream sometimes. I can't help it. They can't help it. So we're just gonna pretend that we don't hear it. And I didn't want anything too floral, floral, florally, flowery, floral. Alicia. I think that's how they said it. But they were British, so. Things are pronounced differently.